2003, the Center for Addiction and Mental Health honored Michael Armstrong with the Courage to Come Back Award. Along with Romeo Dallaire, he and five other Canadians were recognized for their triumph over addiction or mental illness. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Michael Armstrong. Did you see the picture with me with the long hair looking like a million dollars? My name is Carolyn Dolman Downs. I met Michael Armstrong about 15 years ago. This is the story of his journey back to mental health and of his struggle for meaningful work and independence. I had a lot of fun writing a book. It's called Stable in Bedlam. Michael is a frequent guest lecturer at the Ryerson School of Disability Studies. The book takes you inside um, psychosis. In a psychotic state, you are as open and as vulnerable as an infant abandoned. I am stimulated in that state to the point of feeling that the environment is assaulting me. Shortly after his book was published, Michael received the Courage to Come Back Award. It seemed that Michael's life was well on the road to recovery. Now if this were a movie of the week, our story would end here. Our hero has fought his way back to sanity, to a meaningful career, and public acclaim. But this is the real world. And in the real world, Michael was laid off, and once again found himself depending upon social assistance and part-time employment. As we were working on this film, Michael often seemed anxious and depressed about his disability benefits. It seemed every time I turned around, they were threatening to cut him off. Finally, one day, I picked up the camera myself and asked him what was going on. You're being told you're getting no money, that everything falls off the cliff at the end of the month. You know, unless you do something, that something is not entirely clear. Michael was a little reluctant to talk to me about his situation. He was afraid he might be cut off his disability benefits. So I went to a meeting at the 519 Church Street Community Center to get some answers from the ODSP Action Coalition, whose members are themselves recipients of benefits. The coalition members told me about an aggressively adversarial system, which, in its determination to weed out a small number of malingerers, subjects all of its recipients to ongoing harassment. You're only living month to month, so if you lose even a portion of your, of your benefits, you're set back, you're, you're then going to debt or something like that. It gets really bad. They actually lose their apartments. Well, then what do they do? Eviction. The coalition members went on to tell me that when vulnerable people like Michael lose their housing, they end up on the streets, in hostels, prisons, or back in hospital, all of which cost the taxpayer far, far more than providing social assistance. people have stable living conditions, they can take care of themselves and even contribute back to society. Michael attributes a large part of his success to the Catholic worker community he calls home. These are the people who welcome his unique gifts and who make it possible for him to enrich our entire community in the many ways that he does. To Dan Hunt, one of the founders of the Catholic worker community, and the last time I was sick I, was, I had to wait 30 hours for a room in the hospital emergency section, and this community of Catholic workers arranged it that there were always one or two people from the community with me. While we were making this film, one of Michael's community, James Loney, was taken hostage and held in Iraq for nearly four months. Michael's home was thrown into crisis, and now it was his turn to be there for others. I think of Michael as a mystic, as someone who, um, in his prayer life, has uh, encountered God in some way and he's able to share that that knowledge of his in the way that he lives uh, his daily life with people around him so if you ever forget that you're beautiful Michael will remind you because he sees that in each person let us simplify ourselves recognize as I have so often had to do our helplessness, our vulnerability, our relative unsophistication, and yes, our potential for seeing our divinity. The peace I feel, to repeat, is a work in progress. I have acquired a happiness that I recognize is a blessing. Of course, I have had and will continue to have moments of stress and fear. Many tears remain to be shed, but a fundamental sense of security remains. 
This from someone who lives on a very low income, with a career not yet realized, who has never and may never own a computer, a car, a house, or even space enough for my books. I do not say this as a boast, but as witness. It is possible to have had as little material success as I have had, and yet feel completely filled up with blessings. Hello, um, I am Michael Armstrong. I'm a 55 year old white. I have other labels, bald, glasses, homosexual, uh, lawyer, um, teacher. My mother is amazing. My father died recently. Um, and I'm here and uh, the world is beautiful. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding.